Alright guys, I've got some really cool gear in front of me. I've got the brand new 2018 MacBook Pro. And right next to it, I've got the 2017 MacBook Pro. And I'm going to do a comparison. Both of these are the top of the line ones. I've also got the Blackmagic eGPU. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So what I want to do is I'm going to look at these laptops. Now I know there was a thing called uh, Throttlegate that came out. And we'll talk about that in a sec. But Apple's actually since done an update. And I've installed the update. So this is the latest review um, with the Apple update installed. What we're also going to be doing is we're going to be looking at some speed tests doing um, Premiere Pro. We're going to be looking at some Lightroom and some Photoshop as well. So I'm going to talk about the ergonomics, what I think about these. I'm going to talk about the performance and I'm going to talk about the things that I like and I dislike about it. So some of you may know me from my other video where I bought the 2016 MacBook Pro and I returned it and I absolutely hated it. And um, that was a very popular video, over 500,000 views so far. Uh, same thing this eGPU. I really didn't like this. Um, so I just want to let you guys know something right now. I am an Apple user. I use Apple products, been using them for a long time. My main computers are Apple. I do also use Windows, but my phone, for example, is an iPhone, an iPhone 10. So I'm not hating on Apple here. And also, I'm not paid or endorsed by Apple or anybody. All these views and opinions are mine. And I just want to let you know, if I hate something, I let you guys know I hate it. And if I love it, I let you know I love it. So this is a very non-biased review. So let's just jump straight in. So let's talk about the specs. So the MacBook Pro that I got was kind of the MacBook Pro I was hoping to get a couple of years ago when I bought the first one that had the touch bar on it. So let's talk about the specs. I basically spec'd out everything except for the internal SSD. So this is the new i9 processor running at 2.9 gigahertz for 4.8 uh, turbo boost. Now this is a six core processor. All this new uh, line of MacBook Pros 2018 are all the six core processors. So they're using the 8th gen Coffee Lake processors from Intel. Video card in here is the Radeon Pro 560X, which has four um, gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on board. And of course, we've got the internal SSD, which goes all the way up to four terabytes. Now, I didn't buy the four terabytes. I bought the one terabyte. I think that spending the extra money for the four terabytes is Frankly, it's just a waste of money. There's other options and other solutions out there. In fact, one of them we're going to be doing a review on pretty soon, which is a big box uh, from G-RAID, which has an 8 terabyte external SSD uh, RAID, which actually runs faster than the internal drive inside the MacBook Pro. That's pretty expensive. It's about five grand. But you also compare it to this, you're paying about three grand to upgrade from one terabyte to the four terabytes. So, you know, think about that. I think it's a lot of money. Um, do you really need to keep everything on here? No. There's external drive. So personally, do I think it's worth it to spend the money for that? No, because I'm going to use a RAID system or attach external hard drives or things like that. When I'm finished with my work, such as big video projects or whatever, I'm going to upload them to my RAID and keep them off my system. So all I need is enough for traveling. I found that the 512 is, you know, is going to cause a little discomfort because I'm constantly going to be having to move things to an external drive. But with the one terabyte, I'm actually okay. So I can actually edit off my RAID or my external drives. I like to use those Samsung T5 drives. Or I could just put my project on a desktop here, do my editing, and then when I'm finished with the project, you know, just move it off there. So one terabyte seems to be sufficient. Just the upgrade costs are kind of ridiculous. They said they couldn't put 32 gigs in here without it doing serious uh, power because it would have to be desktop class RAM uh, because of the KB Lake processor. So with the Coffee Lake, it's a little bit more efficient. And also Apple has slightly beefed up the battery inside of here. So now we've got 32 gigs of RAM. For me, that was a big thing because, you know, working on video, having multiple projects open, maybe I'm in Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, and I want to use Dynamic Link. I need that 32 gigs of RAM. RAM doesn't speed you up if you just have one program open. What it does is it enables you to open multiple programs and have them not throttle each other. The other thing also is throttle each other like it's a fight for the desktop. <laughs> okay, so the other good thing about doing a lot of RAM is if you're working in something like After Effects and you want to do a RAM preview, 
you can uh, preview in real time a longer clip. Same thing with Photoshop if you're editing your video in there. All right, so 32 gigs of RAM to me, something to get me very, very excited about. All right, so let's move on to some of the aesthetics of here is the keyboard. That's the first thing I want to talk about because they've said that they've added a quieter keyboard. So you're not going to hear a difference, but let me hit the D key a few times on the old one, 2017. Let me hit it on the 2018. Oh, much better sound. Okay, so <laughs> the sound is kind of cool, but I don't really, you know, I'm not worried about, you know, waking up dogs and freaking out the neighbor's pets. What I really care about is um, one, well, if I am in the room of somebody who's got that clicky keyboard, the 2016 was the worst. 2017 got a little better, but the 2018 is a lot better. What they've done is they put a little slight silicon membrane underneath there, and it's also gonna stop with the dust issue. But the thing I like about it is it's just ever so much more spongy. It's not like clicky, it's a little bit more spongy, which, seems like not a big deal and in fact i think other people doing the reviews have really downplayed this to me this is huge it's massive it's humongous i could not type on the 26 2016 or the 2017 without messing up at least one sentence yes i suck at typing i'll admit it my hands are fine they function i can even play guitar but i can play keyboards but i cannot type very well i found on the 2018 one of my favorite features i know is the fact that this keyboard, I can actually type on it. It's not hugely better, but it's better enough that I can actually type without making mistakes. So I am very, very happy about that. All right, so let's move on to the next thing is the trackpad. It still has this ginormous trackpad, the size of an aircraft carrier. The good thing about the trackpad is if, you know, if you're a pilot and you're flying and uh, you need to make an emergency landing, you can make a landing on the trackpad on these MacBook Pros. It's big enough, but it's also big enough for you to bump it and nudge it with your elbows and different things like that. Well, not your elbows. You shouldn't put your elbows on there, but you know, like your, your wrists, your palms. Um, you can sometimes bump these. And I was finding I was having a lot of problems with that with the 2017 model. Uh, 2016 was worse. Palm rejection wasn't working so well. Apple did some updates and got that a lot better. So I haven't been having so many problems, you know, when you're typing and then, you know, it somehow moves and then it grabs a word and then moves it and then it becomes, you know, some cryptic message. Um, not so bad on the 2017. On the 2018, I have not had that problem at all so far. I've only had this a few days, so I might change my mind later. But I'm definitely liking that about the trackpad. The one thing I did not like about the trackpad with this giant trackpad is we've got all this space and the distance you'd use between your fingers. So a big distance like that means you're trying to drag and drop something. A smaller means you want to scroll. They had that calibrated where I, I sometimes had to use two hands to drag and drop things from hard drives. I don't know if you guys had that issue. Um, I found that very frustrating. In fact, I had an opportunity to meet with the Apple MacBook Pro product manager and she declined to go on camera um, two separate occasions with me, but it was nice to talk to her about it. And I mentioned that to her and um, rather than, you know, saying, oh, maybe we should look at that. She was like, no, you're doing it wrong. Very typical of Apple and said, no, look how nicely it scrolls and Safari and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I, I want to drag and drop. So maybe that distance should be calibrated. I don't know. I can't confirm that's been done, but maybe they have done that on the new one because I've noticed that my drag and drop is a lot easier now. I'm not having to do two fingers. So trackpad, a lot better. So this is the third generation, by the way, of this particular MacBook Pro. This is the second generation. I had the first generation returned it because it was just junk. Um, okay, so moving on to a couple of other things that are very concerning before we get into all the stuff that everybody else talks about. Okay, the ports. Obviously, everyone talks about the ports. There's USB-C ports, four of those, and a headphone jack. That's it. MagSafe, an incredible invention, gone forever. Um, hopefully they bring it back in the future um, because I really did like the MagSafe. So here's a good thing. You can do things like external eGPUs, which E actually stands for external, so external GPU. Um, you could take uh, different hard drives, devices, screens, and power and plug it into the USB-C. So it truly is a universal serial bus now. Um, Obviously, yes, the USB 3s, we need dongles, and yes, and I have a bag of dongles and all those kind of different things. We need that. In fact, I have a device that I ran up the stairs. That's why I'm puffing like this, and I'm sounding a little hyper. All right, so a great thing that works with the dongle gate is the hyperdrive. 
So you plug this in, it takes two USB-C ports, you plug it into either side, and it gives you an HDMI out. It gives you two uh, USB 3.1 out. It gives you two USB-Cs, and one of those can be used for power. This one can be used for power, and the other one can be, you know, for plugging in other devices. And of course, we've got the card reader. We've got the micro SD, and we've got the SD card reader. So the hyperdrive is awesome. I'll put a link underneath. I actually got this one on the Kickstarter project when it first came out um, on Kickstarter. And because of that, I got the little carry case like that fits in there. And that was a Kickstarter reward. You probably won't get the case. Only I have the case. I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> Maybe it comes with the case or it doesn't. OK, so let's talk about the thing that everyone has been talking about, and that's the thermal throttling or throttle gate or, you know, I like to call it thermal gate because it sounds better. All right. So basically what happened um, and don't worry, there's an update just to give you the spoiler alert. All right. So thermal gate was something that's discovered uh, by a YouTuber, uh, David Lee. And, uh, and he discovered that this was severely throttling the performance and you couldn't get the full performance out of there. And he even went to the extent of putting his MacBook Pro inside a freezer to show that it could render faster and everything like that if it wasn't using thermal throttling. Okay, so thermal throttling, what is it? Well, what happens is we've got chips inside of these computers. Every computer has chips. And particularly a laptop where you have a little bit less space, the fans are in there. And then what happens is when the laptop starts to heat up, the fans kick in to cool it down. And then if the fans can't cool it down to a sufficient degree, then the clock speed slows down to reduce overheating. This stops you getting burned on here. If you remember years ago, someone got burned from a MacBook Pro. So I'm sure Apple's probably erring on the side a little bit of let's not burn people's legs off and let them fry steaks on their laptops. So it, that's why it does and it throttles it down like that slows it down now it turns out that this was slowing it down and all kinds of people were running all kinds of tests and putting their laptops in freezers and blah 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 so i don't recommend putting your laptop in a freezer yesterday july the 24th apple acknowledged that there was an issue and what they had discovered is that there was a missing key inside of their firmware which was causing the fans not to run at full speed and not sufficiently uh, cooling it and also overly throttling it. So they released an update, which I've installed in here. And yes, it does work. So here's the thing. Any of the tests that I did before that, when I was getting ready to do my review, you know, for the last week are gone and null and void. So I ran all my tests again. So the results I'm going to give you for my tests are going to be after installing the patch. So, you know, forget about, you know, you're seeing speed tests and stuff like that. Before that patch, it doesn't really matter because the thermal throttling was an issue. So you want to really be looking at the speed test and the results after installing the Apple update, which is what we're going to be doing here. So one thing is, you know, this design has been with us for, you know, three years now. And it's a beautiful design. Um, maybe we might be seeing something like some kind of, I'd like to see some kind of liquid cooling or something like that. Because having seen some teardowns and stuff like that, the heat sinks inside of these things are kind of anemic. Um, so maybe we'll see some kind of liquid cooling or something like that in the future. All right, another thing is battery life. As I mentioned in my first one, the battery life was terrible. Um, so far on the 2018, the battery life seems to be pretty good. Uh, I've been running it off battery and it's holding up. And, you know, I, I don't think it's going to get anywhere near the 10 hours that Apple um, talks about. Um, I, I don't know what are they doing just as maybe it's just idling, not doing anything for that 10 hours. I have no idea, um, but I won't get anywhere near 10 hours, but I am getting some decent battery life that would enable me to fly in an aircraft, get my work done and hopefully coast to coast. All right, so the monitors have been updated on the new 2018 MacBook Pro to include something called True Tone. True Tone is what we have on our phone. And what it does is it adjusts the ambient light temperature to kind of adjust throughout the day and save your eyes. So that what it means is that the color on it is constantly changing to adapt for the light. Now, this is a really bad idea if you are a graphics professional. Have you ever seen one of these? This is an X-Rite Color Monkey. And professionals use these. We'll pop this puck out onto our screen and calibrate the screen so that we get a constant color temperature. 
Now, this is really important because if you're doing video work, you're doing design, illustration, any kind of creative work, you need to know that your canvas is not constantly changing color. So you want to know that you've got a very set value that is going to be consistent. So turn that true tone display off. Otherwise, your photos, you're going to adjust them to what you see on the screen. And then it's going to look completely different on someone else's monitor or worse. It's going to look different on your own monitor an hour later. That just that thought just ah, for a professional product, please just go under preferences, under display and turn that off. That should be one of the first things you do was the first thing I did when I got this. All right, so let's talk about some speed tests and do some comparisons between the 2018 um, and the 2017. So here's the specs, as I've already mentioned, the 2018 is maxed out with everything i9 processor, 32 gigs of RAM, but one terabyte of uh, SSD. The 2017 was maxed out, same thing, best you could get at the time. And also this one has one terabyte of SSD. Anyway, okay, so let's have a look and we're testing three programs. We're gonna test Lightroom, just something very simple. We can look at Photoshop extensively and also Premiere Pro and uh, doing some tasks and encoding different types of formats. So why don't we just start with Lightroom off the bat. It was very difficult to measure some of the things in Lightroom, uh, but one of the things I am gonna, that I did decide to measure is I took 75 high resolution images from a Hasselblad camera that was from the H5, 5x I believe it was the 60 uh, megapixel files and I took 75 of those and I exported them as JPEGs so the 27 MacBook Pro took 1 minute and 17 seconds and the 2018 MacBook Pro took only 54 seconds so definitely faster but let's jump in and look at some things you know where we're looking at uh, some of the speed of the uh, SSDs the CPU and the GPU by looking at some different tasks inside of Adobe Photoshop. So the first thing we did in Photoshop is we opened up a large panorama. It was 10,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. The first test inside of Photoshop is we tested it with the radial blur filter, which is a great way of testing the CPU because it's very CPU intensive. So we set it to the maximum amount, which is 100 to zoom blur and also the best quality. On the 2017 i7, it took 27.52 seconds. On the new 2018 i9, it took 18.56 seconds to perform the same task. And just in case you wanted to know, with the GP eGPU on the new one, it took 18.27, so it was almost the same. So the next thing we did is we copied that layer nine times so we could build it out. So it wouldn't just be a wide and large flat file. I also wanted to make it a very deep file. So that would be computationally more difficult. So after that, I decided to save it to test the SSD. On the 2017 MacBook Pro, it was one minute and 21 seconds. On the 2018 MacBook Pro, it took one minute and 10 seconds. All right, so let's look at something where we're starting to get a bit more CPU intensive and that, and also throwing a little GPU in there, and that is scaling it. So we're gonna double the size of this 10 layer file up to close to 20,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels. That scratch size of that is gonna be eight gigabytes. Okay, so on the 2017 MacBook Pro, it took one minute and 28 seconds. On the new MacBook Pro, it took 56 seconds. So let's save it out as a 4.7 gigabyte file. And this is gonna put a little more load on the SSD and not just be using the cache. On the 2017 MacBook Pro, it took five minutes and 35 seconds. On the 2018 MacBook Pro, and the fans really started spinning on this one, it was 4.33 seconds. So we're definitely seeing a difference. But another thing that was kind of interesting too, is on the 2017 MacBook Pro, when I used a brush on there, it was quite laggy. So it would go like that and then a brush stroke would follow it. On the 2018, I was seeing absolutely no brush lag. The next thing, let's get a little bit more into the GPU and that's running a tilt shift uh, filter on there, turning up to 100 using the blur gallery, which is very uh, GPU intensive. On the 2017 MacBook Pro, it was 
51.78 seconds on the new 2017 Mac, uh, 2018 MacBook Pro. It was 50.22 seconds, so almost no difference. Um, so the GPU is very similar in there. However, you know, I did do the test on the eGPU. Have a look at my other video on that. And I mentioned that I would try it on the 2018 MacBook Pro, and I did, and I saw a 10 second savings using the eGPU on that one. So with the eGPU, it was 40.92 seconds, so a good 10 seconds saving there. So the eGPU does seem to work well on certain things. Now, one of the things, while I'm talking about that very quickly, is that this is obviously um, designed and optimized to work on DaVinci Resolve. So I'm hoping in the future that um, Adobe and Apple starts to put more support in for the eGPU and we might see some good improvements. Once again, I did a full review on that. Um, have a look at the benefits of it and also um, the not, not so benefits. benefits. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, working with Photoshop. Why don't we have a look at video now? And I ran a number of tests inside of Premiere Pro. And I did it with some different cameras. I did some with the Sony a7 III. I did the Canon 77D. And then I also really wanted to work it with some 4K raw footage from the uh, C200 Canon. And using that Sony a7 III uh, footage, we took a one minute and four second clip. On the 2017 MacBook Pro, it took 18.58 seconds. On the 2018 MacBook Pro, 15.61 seconds. Then I took a 7 minute, 18 second clip from a Canon, just a 1080, and then I exported those. On the 2017 MacBook Pro, it took 2 minutes and 13 seconds. On the 2018, it took 1 minute and 47 seconds. So at this point here, I was like, you know what? This is not bad. I want to compare this to my old trash can Mac Pro, um, you know, which has the, uh, you know, 64 gigs of RAM and it was kind of maxed out for the day. But it's, you know, it's getting a little long in the tooth. But I was curious at how these were performing. I was very surprised. This same test here took 9 minutes and 23 seconds for that Mac Pro to export. So I'm starting to wonder... Um, you know, definitely for my Mac Pro, these are definitely looking at a very viable replacement. Moving on. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do some GPU tests and run Warp Stabilize. So I took some 4K DJI footage and we ran Warp Stabilizer on 381 frames at 4K. On the 2017 MacBook Pro, 3 minutes, 27 seconds. On the... 2018 MacBook Pro, three minutes and one second. The eGPU rendered exactly the same, so it's not really being taken advantage of there. So I really wanted to test this out, so I took a 45 seconds of 60 frames per second uh, 4K RAW HDR video from the Canon C200, and that's using the Canon RAW Lite, and we exported that. The 2017 MacBook Pro took 10 minutes and 23 seconds. The new MacBook Pro, the 2018 model with the i9, took 6 minutes and 56 seconds. All right, so as you can see, we're definitely seeing some good performance boosts inside of the 2018 MacBook Pro top of the line versus the top of the line 2017. For me, this is definitely, um, you know, I like to say this is the laptop I wanted two years ago. Not saying it's a two-year-old technology, but this is what one of the first new MacBook Pro with the touch bar came out. This is what I was hoping for here. So I'm seeing some pretty good performance, reasonable battery life. I would like to see the battery life to be a bit longer. Still not a huge fan about the, the keyboard or the trackpad, but it's definitely better than it used to be. Um, so I'm definitely not returning this. I'm going to keep it. For now, I'm actually quite happy with it. But let me just stop here for a second and talk about one thing, and that's price. Um, the price of this, though, is still kind of ridiculous. I mean, you're looking at four grand for a usable model, you know, seven grand, you know, for the SSDs. I don't, I don't know why anyone would spend that money if you did and you need those four terabytes. Good luck to you. But for the majority of us, around about the $4,000 price point, that's a lot of Benjamins to be dropping on a mobile laptop. Now, you know, PC users are like, ah, suckers. Um, Okay, so yeah, it is it is expensive, but you know you've got to 
think about this. I'm not going to justify the expense because especially things like the SSD and the RAM, that's, I'll just be honest with you, that's a ripoff. Uh, but when you compare this Apple's to Dell's or, or whatever, you know, and obviously I have nothing against Dell's. I have an Alienware downstairs. Love it. Great. I have a couple of Surface Pros. But the thing is, these are a very well-built um, laptop. You know, we've got the unibody, aluminum. It lasts a long time. Uh, you know, these will last five years, six years, no problem at all. So that's one of the things you've got to consider. Also, if you're a professional, um, you know, you're buying professional hardware. Any tool, when you buy a professional tool versus a consumer tool, is going to be more expensive because of the quality. I do understand these have the same components in there. But, you know, but the screen, for example, no, it's not 4K, but it goes up to a very high resolution. Um, I can plug it into a 4K if I like. And um, it looks good. It looks great. The, you know, the Retina display is beautiful. Uh, the audio, everything like that. It's a well-designed laptop that can take a few knocks. Um, also, one of the other things to consider, too, is the MacBook Pros do have a little bit of resale value. So, you know, you go to resell a uh, used PC, you don't get anything for it. But... Um, Apple products do hold their value. So that's something to consider. Um, have a look on Craigslist and or you know eBay and have a look and see what the used ones are selling for and then kind of build that into your price. Because you know, here I am paying about four grand, but if I look what I can sell my 2017 for, if I deduct that price, then that's my real cost of entry and it's not quite as painful. Now there's a couple of things I'd like to see with Apple. Um, like one, I am willing to give up a little bit of that thinness and a little bit of that weight for more robust features like a bigger battery, better battery life, and a real keyboard. Um, still, you know, I'm not a huge fan of these keys. The new one is going to be workable, but I would prefer, you know, a nicer keyboard for a little bit more travel in there. So anyway, guys, that's my thought. What's your guys' thoughts about all of this? I'd love to know. Are you an Apple user? Do you love Apple? Hate Apple? Would you buy this MacBook Pro? Would you not? Am I an idiot? Well, if you, you're going to say that anyway, I don't even have to request that. But drop that in the comments underneath and let me know what you guys think. Uh, what do you guys think about this hardware? Check out my other uh, tutorials. And also, if you like these kind of reviews and also Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials, hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell right now. Become a subscriber and you'll get my new videos whenever they come out, which is at least once a week every Tuesday sometimes on Saturdays and occasionally on other days. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.